This is the Jason Jones Show, powered by Mudhouse Media. Now, here's Jason Jones. Aloha, everybody, and welcome to the Jason Jones Show. I am your host, Jason Jones. Are you tired of politics? I am. I mean, I am tired of it. Are you tired of uh, talking about COVID? Are you tired about conspiracy theories? Even those that are true, a lot of conspiracy theories are true. People who tell you there aren't conspiracies are naive. I know there are conspiracies because I am a member of several conspiracies myself. You know, good conspiracies, but conspiracies nonetheless. But I'm tired of it all. It's Thanksgiving. It is time for us to thank God for thinking of us. We have been in God's mind from eternity, all of us, in our complexity, all of us in our relationships, all of us in our place, all of us in our time, all of us in our sickness, our health, and our challenges. God has thought of us, and here we are. Thank you, Lord. That's what Thanksgiving is about. Thank you, Lord, for letting me live in a free country a constitutional republic. Thank you for that. Thank you for letting me live in a nation state where I can live a prosperous life. I'm not that bright. I'm not that hardworking. But because of the sacrifice of countless generations and their ingenuity and their hard work and their commitment to freedom, the knucklehead that I am full of my vices full of my, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, but thank you, Lord, that I can live in a country where I can provide for my family in abundance, even in challenging times. Thank you, Lord. That's what Thanksgiving is about. And so because this is uh, the day before Thanksgiving, it's a Thanksgiving special, we're going to interview the great Dr. Ted Bear, who has been in Hollywood for 70 years, his father was a pioneer, a cowboy star, Broadway star, and now his children are also heavily involved in the entertainment industry. Dr. Ted Beer is the founder of Movie Guide. So what we're going to talk about today are what movies should we watch with our families on Thanksgiving. We're going to try not to talk about politics, but we talk a little bit about politics. Um, but Dr. Ted Beer is a treasure, and so it is a privilege for me to introduce you, if you don't already know him, to Dr. Ted Beer of Movie Guide. We're going to talk about the movies. It's his top 10 list. I don't think we go through the whole list, but it's his list of movies that you should watch this Thanksgiving. And there are movies on the list I have not watched. So there are going to be movies on the list that you didn't even know about. So you got to listen to this whole episode. And this episode is being brought to you by, of course, it's Dr. Ted Beer. So it's being brought to you by Movie to Movement, promoting a culture of life, love, and beauty through the power of film. Go to movietomovement.com, watch our latest movie, Divided Hearts of America, starring Benjamin Watson. And also, why don't you become a monthly donor? Because Movie to Movement, we are a one-of-a-kind organization. We harness the power of film to communicate the beauty of the human person. We use the power of film to inspire solidarity, but we don't stop there. Oh, no. We use the power of celebrity. We use the power of earned media. You'll see us on Fox News, Hollywood Reporter, front page of Drudge. But everywhere we go, what are we bringing with us? The truth about the beauty of the human person. Not only do you see us in the news, you see our billboards over your city promoting the truth about the beauty of the human person. So you, it's, and we're nonprofit. What does that mean? That means we're donor supported. Everything we do is because someone wrote a donation. Become a monthly donor at movietomovement.com and help us become a partner with us in the most important work in the world, telling the truth about the human person, which in this age of subhumanism is being lost. Let's share that truth. All right, so here we are, my interview with the one, the only, the great, the Hollywood legend. He should have his own star on the Walk of Fame. Dr. Ted Bear, The Jason Jones Show. Aloha, Dr. 
Dr. Ted Bear, welcome to the Jason Jones Show. What a joy it is to be with you. One of my favorite people in all of the entertainment industry with a great sense of drama and the power of drama. Well, thank you for that. I miss you. I, I used to see you five, six, seven, eight times a year. I, I think I've the last time I saw you was uh, maybe seven months ago. Is that it? Six, seven months ago? Yeah, but you've, you've moved out of Hollyweird, you know, I so did. you're not... I mean, you never were permanently in Hollywood, but you were more often in Hollywood. So we got to get together. I, my home is your home. Uh, my, my lunch <laughs> meetings, I'll, I'll buy you lunch, whatever you want. Well, if you're buying, I'm there. And uh, so I wanted to talk to you about, um, I, got, I get all of your emails, and I get a lot of emails, but I don't open them. But I open every movie guide email that I get because of the important work that you're doing. And... You sent out an email with Thanksgiving movie suggestions, and I thought I would have seen them all, and I only saw half of them, and I think we only would have shared one film in common. Um, so I want to talk to you about that, but there's a big story that's in all the newspapers today, and, I, and maybe we could start with that. You're the guy that would know. It's, uh, it's being reported that all of these executives of these big Hollywood companies, first of all, there are huge layoffs, but there are top executives who are not being laid off and are deciding to move on to other industries even, not even move on. From, they're not shuffling the deck like they normally do, but they're just moving on out. What, what's happening in Hollywood? Well, most of these executives, uh, you know, have said, and this is probably true because they come to our office. We just did our How to Succeed in Hollywood class. We had one of the uh, the head of production at uh, Legendary, which uh, – was legendary for doing the DC comics and legendary. He just finished Dune and fascinating talk. My students were just amazed. And then the next day was um, one of the heads, the CFO, of one of the biggest finance houses. Um, but a lot of them say that because they're working remotely, <laughs> you know, they're, they're no longer putting in uh, 24 hours a day. They're no longer rushing to the office. They're no longer staying late and burning the midnight oil, and suddenly they're home, and they're with their uh, family, and they're with their children, and they like it. <laughs> you know, they they realize that there's something more to life than just going to work. I mean, some of these people have been working in the industry for not only 11 years, which is one of the most famous ones, but 20 years, and suddenly they saw that there's a world out there, and because they're working remotely, now this is a shocker, because they're working remotely, uh, which everybody says their work product goes up, et cetera, they realize that the culture, they're separated from the culture. The culture is you have to go to the office. To, uh, you know, I love coming to our office because Movie Guide, we're filled with great people who have faith and values, and we get to talk to each other and we get to share with each other. So in spite of the fact we may not be generating an article every five minutes because we're talking to each other for five minutes. It just gives us the camaraderie. It gives us the joy of, uh, of praying together. We pray together every morning. It gives us the joy of community. And these executives, without the community, have become isolated and say, we don't need it. We don't want the community anymore. And this is sort of a caution for all companies out there, you know, that you think, well, they can stay home and they can do more. Uh, yes, they can do more for a limited period of time, but then they realize they don't need you. They don't have the culture. And this is the same as education. You know, I was head of a department at Berkeley, head of a department at City University of New York. These kids are getting disconnected. I mean, I have one kid who comes from a university here, very smart. He realized, why am I spending so much money at Harvard or Yale or whatever else when I can do this online and I can do it someplace else and I, they don't need it? They don't need it without the community. So uh, what the long-term effects of this, we don't know. Uh, I don't have a crystal ball, thank God. You know, God has the, uh, the future in his hands, not me. Uh, but I think that the disruption to the culture is going to be much more significant in the entertainment industry, in education, in every one of those than people can possibly imagine. And the good news that in education – you're going to get people returning to faith and values. But in the entertainment industry, how are you going to make a $200 million film like Dune without the community? One thing that my friend said is we love the community. Every one of them is like a vacation. Now, that's hard to believe, but 
you know, one of my people who talked uh, did uh, a big movie, 18,000 people. But, you know, you have a community there. My father, when he was in movies, he starred in 62 movies when I was on when he was on Broadway, and, and I did a little bit of that. We traveled together. We play cards together. We talk together. It was a it it was like I visited a circus with the great Melinda's the other day, and there's a community back there. So that community church too is very important for people keeping their jobs. So so you're saying it's not completely uh, that. I thought you were going to say that they didn't have the stomach for the hard battle with the industry being so disrupted. So you're saying it's not really that they don't have the stomach for it, but that with the breakdown of community and they're reconnecting with their family, maybe their old friends, their neighbors, they, they're, they're just, they're not in it anymore. They're out. Yeah. You got to read all those stories of these people. They say, well, my kids, I got to talk to my kids. I get to spend time with, boy, this is a blessing, you know, Hey, the job is not as important as my husband or my wife or my kids. And that's, 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 you know, as I said, the same thing is happening in education. I mean, I can't tell you how many, because I was head of these departments, how many kids say, why should I spend so much money at Dartmouth with my alma mater when I can go someplace else, get a better education in my field, engineering or whatever it is, and spend much less money. I mean, and I have community. They want community. You know, God designed people to want to be in community. You know, I used to be gone half the year, and you're right about, about this, this community. But people would, you know, and you and I hear the same thing. A lot of our friends will say, oh, I don't know how you work in Hollywood around all those weirdos. I've become really close friends with a lot of, quote, unquote, Hollywood's weirdos. And, and some of the most beautiful moments of my life are at four in the morning at the Chateau Marmont when you have such a diverse group of folks and we're all there and and my wife used to say to me you know you don't when you travel you don't have to stay out till six in the morning and I say no babe you don't understand that this is my job and I really do have to build these and I she goes well but you like it I go I do like it they're interesting people we have a lot of fun so I started bringing her with me on these trips and then she would see and she'd say oh now I see why you had to be out till six in the morning she goes but I'm not I'm not cut out for that and so I do miss sort of my community in Hollywood. Like you say, I'm not going there as much anymore. And now that I'm home, I've never been home as much as I have been since I graduated college and um, started working in Washington, D.C. over 20 years ago. Just last week, my seven-year-old was going on a bike ride. And he goes, Dad, I'm going to go for a bike ride. We were playing chess. He's like, I want to go for a bike ride um, with my friend. I said, okay. I said, oh, you break my heart every time you leave. And he said, no, Dad, you break my heart. You used to break my heart all the time when you would leave. My heart would break. Oh, but you don't leave oh. so much anymore. So, But you used to break my heart. And my wife's like, wow, that took a dark turn real quick. And um, But it's true. And so I, I guess you're right. So many families now are realizing that we were chasing that mechanical rabbit around the track like a greyhound. And, <laughs> and we realized maybe well, that's not a good use of our time, you know. Um, yet you and I love, I had to learn, you were the one that taught me. I mean, you don't even remember we met 20 years ago in Washington, DC. I wasn't even involved in film and you were kind and supportive of me, mentored me right out of the gate, um, uh, when we first met and you have such a love for the entertainment industry. You were raised in it with your father, who is this cowboy star in the very early days of the industry. And uh, so you've been around almost you know, th- through your father's stories, you've been in the industry from its birth, I'm sure. was that is that fair to say? 74 years, and he, he was in the industry in 1925, so it's been a, a long run for our family, and now my children, and we just shot a uh, Thanksgiving video with one of my 14 grandchildren. So to say, this is why we're doing this, look at this grandchild, it's wonderful. And, what? you know, Jason, so. It's wonderful. Well, that's something you have done. I always tell people when you have a mission or a business, you're an entrepreneur or business, you need to make your family a part of it. And that's something you have done. Like your son, Robbie, is a real leader in the industry. And I remember seeing your daughter when she was so young on the red carpet doing interviews. And would you say that that's the secret to your success as a father is your, your movie guide ministry wasn't something you did leaving the family behind. It was something from their very earliest ages that your children were a part of. 
Well, that was the same thing with my father when he was, you know, uh, on Broadway or when he was starring in a Disney movie or whatever else, which he did up until the, you know, his <laughs> his seventies. He was starring on Broadway and uh, in in great whoop the revival Whoopi as the father of the bride, etc. But I would go with him. You know, I still remember I was born in '46, flying in a little. Um, tiny Cessna plane flying up to his stock performance in a Connecticut theater. And that was, you know, I'm, it must have been 1949. So I was three years old. And all of those were special moments. I mean, I can remember a lot of those moments um, being with Groucho Marx and behind the scenes with his daughter playing with his daughter on the beach and all those different things. And so involve your family. I guess we're, we're not actually talking about the entertainment industry and leaving, but we're talking about, the, and these people can involve their family. One thing you said, which is very important, if you don't enjoy the community you're connected to, leave it and join a community that you like. You don't have to torture yourself by doing something you hate. Uh, you don't have to be with people you don't like. We live in, uh, until Governor uh, Grusom, oh, excuse me, Newsom, cracks down on us all we can we can actually go across the street to another community church or whatever else and enjoy ourselves well that's another story dr Brown. I'm, I'm writing an article coming out next week i'm calling on a i'm calling on a new movement we're going to start a new movement what i call the speak easy speak freely movement which is we're not going to let them interfere in our businesses uh we're going to run our businesses with or without the permission of the state you know that, that they're way overstepping and uh, when they Amen. shut when they shut down the bars uh, with prohibition, thirty one gin bars opened up for every bar they closed. I think we need that kind of chutzpah. You know, you're going to close down our bookstore. There are going to be thirty two underground bookstores. You're going to close down our churches. There's going to be a hundred home churches. You're going to close down our restaurants and bars. And we're going to open up speakeasies because, uh, and I, this is the moment I've been waiting for all my whole life. My thesis as an undergrad was on using corruption as a weapon against tyranny. And I looked at Oscar Schindler. I looked at the farmers in China. Never imagined in my own lifetime. My interest was in how to train Chinese, how they can use corruption to subvert the one-child policy. That was my interest by corrupting government officials. But I never thought that that, that research as an undergrad into corrupting government officials to free oneself from tyranny would be applicable in my own country. But here we have it. Here we have it. Now, I don't want to talk about politics on Thanksgiving. That's why I wanted to have you on. Our children are probably scared. They've listened to all of our talk about the election. Our grandchildren, we're going to have all these diverse families uh, coming together. At least in my family, we are having a super spreader event. Although I think we've all had COVID, <laughs> so we don't have to worry about that. We all have antibodies. Um, but I'm going to have all seven of my children together, my grandchildren, uh, my daughter-in-law, my sister. It's going to be a beautiful time. And I'm going to discipline myself to, to, to block and bridge every conversation away from politics, from voter fraud, from Biden, from Trump, and stay focused on God and on family and on gratitude. And so you gave us 10 movies that we should watch. I don't, I don't know if you want to go down the list um, or, or tell us the one that you think. Um, I, I hadn't even heard of the Christmas Chronicles, well, gonna... part one, let alone part two. So there's some movies I'm in here. I'm going to highlight a couple of them. Okay, let's give us the movies I'm gonna we need to I'm going to highlight a couple of them and just make your life. You know, first place, one of my favorites is Squanto's Warrior's Tale. Oh, that's my and, that's uh, my number one. So that was the one that would have been on my number one list. Love that movie. Yeah, it's just a wonderful story about the miracles. And it, it was done by a good friend of mine who had head of Disney at the time. You know him. And he was a Christian and went to a congregational church. And it's extremely faithful and it shows <laughs> the pilgrims actually uh, celebrated thanksgiving with uh, uh, with the native americans and squanto was the big bridge and squanto was a miracle he he spoke uh, a little bit of english because he'd been captured and uh, taken over to spain to portugal then he uh, uh, escaped and went over to england so he was you know well educated and he was the one who bridged the gap between uh, the Native Americans and the pilgrims who were living peacefully, but there were tribes that were angry. It was the, uh, it was the other political tribes, 
they're angry, but we're not talking about politics. Um, John Adams is a great series. Uh, again, done by people. Oh, we know Do- Dr. Beer, can we go back tremendous. to Squanto? Can we go back to Squanto real quick? Which I think, I think, sure. Squanto, I think Squanto was the first American. He was truly the first citizen of the New World, because he was Native American. He was a First Nation person. He was Christian. He was a Catholic, and he bridged the gap between Puritan Protestants and. Like you said, a tribe that was not happy because Squanto's tribe had all died out from disease. That yep. was not communicated yep. intentionally, but you know but, that, that's what happened. But you know, up to today, because I've spoken in many places like you have. I mean, even when I was speaking in uh, North Dakota for the governor about their film industry, um, you know, they they gave us a tour of uh, the Native American lands, and it was the same story. There were the people who were uh, but farmers and agriculture who were usually peaceful and the people who were <laughs> stealing the farm product, um, they weren't called Democrats at that time. Excuse me. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you can't. That's true. Hey, the Democrats have been the party of, they were the party that actually eradicated, uh, waged a war of genocide against <laughs> the Native Americans. They're the party of slavery, segregation, and abortion. They are consistent. They're for every evil in every age. They don't, they don't, they don't waver in that. But boy, are they good at opposing the evils they supported last age. This is what it's going to be like on my Thanksgiving dinner. We're going to say we're not going to talk about politics. <laughs> we will find a way every step of Do the way. Do not talk about politics. Okay, so. But if you want to show, now, how old are your kids? So my kids range from 7 to 31 because I'm Catholic. That's how we do it. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, 14 grandchildren would have a large range between my kids and my grandchildren. Um. You know, if you want to see something the seven-year-old and everybody can enjoy, Charlie Brown's Thanksgiving is absolutely wonderful, and it gives the essence, just like Charlie Brown's Christmas. And the networks were going to take it off, and now they've uh, you know, gotten so much pressure they're going to put it on again, but we don't know. They're probably going to keep trying to take it off, and it's just delightful. And when I was doing The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe on CBS television, I was using an animator, Bill Melendez, who did the Charlie Brown series, and I'd come into him. He, he was a boxer, Jason. I'm sorry, and I never converted him. Although I saw him as just a year before he died, he said he'd always say to me, "You and Schultz come in here witnessing to me. What do you think? Why do you do that?" And I loved Bill, but uh, well, Charles anyway, Schultz was, was a, a, a national this. treasure, right? I mean, he was a beautiful Christian. Did you ever get to meet Charles Schultz? Well, no, I didn't. But uh, his son came to the gala, as you remember. And, I do. Um, this was a great blessing. Yeah, so so that Thanksgiving special uh, is is one of the most beautiful. As a child, I could not wait every And remember when we were kids, that came out once a year. Like you got your one chance to see it, and that was it. And it was a movie event. It was a TV event every year. So I can't believe that they're trying to to purge that. And and Schultz, being a Protestant, I, rem- I, I was always shocked later on as I became a Catholic, that how the only place you could really hear that story about Squanto was in that, that Thanksgiving special from, from uh, Charles Schultz. So that's something I think everyone right. is, is going to watch. We need to watch that as a family. Um, well, there's another series, Jason, that, that is really good. It's a little bit um, it's got a little bit of violence in it. It's Saints and Strangers. Have you seen that? No, that's another one. I said, how do I not know about this? Okay, so tell us about Saints and Strangers. Two-part miniseries. You know, National Geographic for a while was headed up by a Christian. And the people who came and made Saints and Strangers, who came to the Movie God Awards, were very strong. And it's the story of the Mayflower and the Plymouth and the settling. But it's an in-depth historical, just like John Adams is. It's a wonderful historical portrait, two parts, the exact story, and it doesn't succumb to political correctness, which is quite incredible. And it shows the Christians among the you know, the settlers compared to the people who weren't Christian. So it's a, it's a contrast, and it's, uh, it's good. You'll love it. You will love it if you haven't seen it. No, we're going wa- to watch that tonight. I want to go back to, to, back to John Adams. Uh, why did you pick John Adams for the Thanksgiving special? By the way, it's one of my favorite, if not – my favorite uh, miniseries of all time. John Adams well, was all my the founding favorite fathers. founding fathers, yeah. Yeah, of all the founding fathers, John Adams had the clearest 
um, first place family values. I mean, that they wrote each other uh, all the time, and uh, that's you know, so we know more about him. But two, he was extremely Christian and extremely committed to his faith. Uh, so, and that showed through. I mean, everybody else, you know, Hamilton read the Bible to his kids all the time, but Hamilton had some flaws. <laughs> Every uh, all the others and Jefferson had a lot of flaws, although he was he he was great. But John Adams was incredibly faithful and driven by his faith to do what he did, which was beautiful. Well, what I love about John Adams, again, looking to people who conform to the spirit of their age and those who don't, John Adams was a man who was great even where his age was not. Where you look at Thomas Jefferson, he was an exemplar of his age. So. But where the age had blind spots, Thomas Jefferson had blind spots. And that's, that's to be expected. But John Adams, George Mason, and a few others, I mean, these were the pioneers of the abolitionist movement. And that's um, true. they, they were... And, and he was, you know, he leaned toward anti-federalism, which, uh, you know, which is regionalism and lo- localism all the things which are important to have checks and balances so you don't we're not going to talk about politics so i'll i'll stop that right there no well, we're talking about john adams so okay so we got john adams um saints and sinners charles schultz uh the thanksgiving special peanuts thanksgiving special now what movie are you going to watch a movie with the family on thanksgiving or are you like i review movies for a living we're done <laughs> no movie you know Case and I watch movies every night. Last night I was watching a movie and a good friend of mine who you know called me up. We talked for 23 minutes because you can see how long on your phone. And I was so tired I went to bed. So now I got to watch the rest of that movie. We we pick out our winners right now. So if you have a, a winner you want to submit to us, uh, we review it and then I look at it. And then I select the scenes from it. But we're constantly watching movies. So Thanksgiving, I'm going to go over to Robbie's. I'm going to enjoy his children. Lily and I are going to have a great time. And I'm not going to watch a movie. I'm going to go outside and play with them. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I love it. So what was number one on your list for Thanksgiving? Well, number one was Squanto. Okay, Squanto. John Adams was number two. Charlie Brown Christmas. And then uh, Saints and Strangers was in the top uh, ten. Uh, you know, I, in terms of, of historical movies, that the latest version 2019 of little women has a tremendous amount of christian content and it's about giving to the poor and the needy and the homeless and so it shows a lot of christian virtues which i was impressed and i was impressed when uh, when i spent time with the director because that's what we do we spend time with the people who make them the program and uh, it's it's almost on a par with Catherine hepburn's version in 1990 uh, 1933 so yeah, maybe we, we can watch both. That's a that's a big compliment. Now, can I bring up two movies from the past year that I, I am an evangelist for that I try to get my family to watch and I'll probably we're doing a four day retreat as yeah. a family. Now I hope you saw Mr. Jones, but don't show it to your family. No, I didn't see Mr. Jones. What's this? Mr. Jones is probably you know, we give out awards for faith and values. Um it's about a writer who is writing for the for the uh, British papers who went to Russia because he had interviewed Hitler and exposed him to interview Stalin. And he, you know, escapes because uh, his friend who was a writer who, and I mean, this is a major news writer who was uh, writing uh, about the, you know, the whole corrupt Soviet system, which was very corrupt, was killed in the street. You know, supposedly it was just an accident somehow. And uh, so he realized, and he went to the Ukraine, and it shows. But in that, he exposes Walter Durante. Now, do you know Walter Durante? I do. I do. I'm reading this he right was now. In, this is fantastic. How did I not know? I'm, yeah. He well, was how do I New run York an organization Times. called Movie to Movement? It's a shame. I did not even know about this movie. Yeah. And Walter Durante was the, uh, New, the New York Times correspondent, which they have never repented on, who lied about Stalin lied about the uh, the homeless the oil, which was the killing of this, the Ukrainians. That's right. All of that stuff. And they have never apologized. So if you want to talk about corruption in the New York Times, it goes back to the 1940s, which, of course, made 
the, the Soviet Union lasts longer than it should have. As Robert Conquest said, you know, with all that, that the Soviet Union was supported by lies. And we're not going to get into politics. Well, no, but, so, but Dr. Know, Barry, you know, as, as I'm reading this, this is a movie I, I, I wish they would even, you know, my big, in Moving to Movement and our Vulnerable People Project, our big initiative this year was trying to wake people up since February of food insecurity that would be caused by an Italy-like ham-fisted shutdown of, of economies and the whole world fouled. And now the World Health Organization admits that, oops, we're starving the world. This was a bad idea. And, you know, you have a guy like Durante who claimed to care about the, the downtrodden when he was covering up for a massive famine. And we, we see the same thing today well, in the New York Times. They don't cover the Uyghur genocide. They don't cover the, the man-made famine of COVID shutdowns. And it's just unbelievable how these types of personalities, they, they, they keep coming back again. Well, the, thing, the, the reason you cannot show it to anybody else, except your mature friends who are solid in the faith, is because actually Mr. Jones, the writer, who gets picked up, he's re rescued by Hearst, who was conservative, and published in Hearst, and that was the first expose of Stalin and who he was. So it's a great, great movie. But Durante invites him to a party, which is full of perversion. I can't describe it on your podcast. Incredible perversion. So what the reviewers do not like about Mr. Jones is this expose not only of Durante being a liar, a cheat, and a fraud for the New York Times, but being an incredible pervert. They hate that word, and that's exactly what he is in that scene. Yeah, they're all perverts, by the way. I mean, even in our own church, that these victimists who, who are always ranting on about social justice, but they were silent on the genocides in Iraq, silence on the genocide in East Turkestan, uh, silent on the man-made famines in the world today. They all share one thing in common. They're perverts. And I think it's a, a, a sort of narcissism where they can't think beyond themselves. And I think it's somehow linked to their, their perversion. So I'm going to check. So That's true. A lot of the echo. Go on. No, Go I was on. just going to say, but the two movies I was going to mention, and I don't know what you think, but two of my favorite movies of all time came out in the past 12 months. Uh, one was A Hidden Life by Terrence Malick. Breathtaking. I don't, I don't. Yeah, I love the hidden life. Absolutely, it was a movie. It came out last year, and it was one of our movie god award winners. And we know, you know, all the people involved as you do too. So it's a it's a great movie. I know. I know several. I had one conversation in my life with Terrence Malick. I was trying to talk my way onto marketing the Tree of Life, which I felt was marketed catastrophically, and it, I think it's just the most beautiful movie of all time. And so, but the fact that I got to be on a phone call. I sold Terrence Malick, but he had to sell. I think it was Sony. He didn't. He wasn't able to sell Sony, so I wasn't on that project. But what, what we wanted to say is, well, that, come, it, come to my Facebook site because his son is a is on there all the time. So. Oh, right on! And he lives. His son lives in Austin, right? I'd I'd like a chance to. I'm meet not going to say anymore. I don't want to. Well, I think I it's public. I think the whole world. Knows. You know, my father was a star. No, I know. I think the whole world knows <laughs> they live in Austin. Their companies are in Austin. But no, but no, a lot of the people. You know, I'm very respectful of the people that come to the Movie God Awards. I tell everybody, uh, and I told them in my class, which we had some very uh, prominent, wealthy people, I say, you cannot go to the awards if you're going to pitch people. And it was the same thing true of the people who came to teach, like the head of production of Legendary Pictures. And he said, and everybody who came, we just get a, a tidal wave of scripts in, and you can't deal with them all. And you don't want to be one of those people that are, you know, that are stalking them. I said, the reason for the gala is to present Jesus Christ. And as one person said, you're giving him, you're giving him church. We want to present the truth that will set them free. We don't want to introduce them to a bunch of people that are just going to overwhelm them. And um, we give them a safe, safe haven. That's now, that, it's that grasping. Somebody. It's that desperate grasping. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's unattractive. And right, we're there to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and be authentic. For, be, you know, it's an industry that's based on everyone sees other people through the lens of utility. And you don't want to be that guy. You no. want to step outside of that world. And um, no, I hope, I hope, Jason, that you're going to say, I don't know how you want your program is. I've got 
But I hear, you know, I hope you're going to say that your next favorite movie is Infidel because Cyrus was one of the teachers and he's one of my no, best friends. No, I love, I, I, love, I love Cyrus. I have not watched Infidel. God forgive me. I've been too busy promoting my movie – uh, that is out on SalemNow.com, Divided Hearts of America, starring Benjamin Watson. That would be a great film to potentially win a Movie Guide Award. You gave it a great review. Just saying. Uh, that would be nice. But, you know, we've already won some Movie Guide Awards. I don't want to be grasping myself. But, no, the movie... Well, here, here's, what you, here's what you need to know. You know what? I had one person who did a really good film who came to the class, uh, drama, um, The Reliant with Kevin Sorbo. And Eric Roberts, very, very good, uh, very well done. And he didn't make a dime. And then, you know, I get these wealthy people. That's why we started the movie guide, How to Succeed in Hollywood book, came from the heir to the Walmart fortune, one of the major areas. There's, you know, hundreds of little heirs, but this is one of the major ones. And uh, the founder of Compact Computer. And they all made movies. The founder of Compact Computer made The Radicals, which won the Berlin Film Festival Award. And they all lost money. So my point is that Christians are not going to be able to continue to make the movies unless they can make money. And all the people there were teaching them, how do you make money? It's not just about the, – the movie itself is only 10 or 20 percent of the value. The value comes in, the, you know, the marketing, the promotion, the distribution. Exactly. And unfortunately, a lot of those platforms – I'm not going to name them, but you can name them uh, – that are out there. Take advantage of filmmakers. I mean, I had a doctor who put a lot of money into you a, and I lost a him film as a about friend. the election. No, there was another doctor, we won't say his name, that, that poured tens of millions of dollars into these films, tried to hire me and you. I don't know if, if you remember. And everyone else was love bombing him. And you, and you and I were like, do not release this theatrically. Don't spend another penny. And I haven't heard from the guy again. We were friends. Of course, he they spent. Well, I hear from him. I hear from him all the time because I send him my scripture verses that I send the Hollywood people, and and uh, I say to him at his birthday every year, "Do you want to continue?" He said, "Yeah, I want to continue receiving it, please." So, <laughs> you know, he's a so good man. Actually, you know, he's a good man. But what happened is people lie, and they're very sophisticated, and they look very professional. They present themselves in a way that they you trust them, and uh, they 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 lure. A friend of mine in the industry said. Have you noticed that all the Christian films that used to go uh, straight to VOD are now going to theaters and all the studio films that used to go straight to theaters are going to VOD? He was like, your tribe is the easiest to take advantage of. Like, we, he, he's not a Christian. He goes, we lure you into the worst predicaments. Like, you just do what you were doing before now. Well, and now you're trying to all good story bang down you. theater doors. Here's a good story for you. The New York Times, when one of our friends who, who uh, donates to us regularly um, from Denver got into it, published an article about all the outsiders who came to Hollywood and were just completely fleeced. And there are a couple of good stories in there, including Howard Hughes and, you know, billionaire and all that stuff and how he ended up depressed. China, and, and Georgia. All, all the Louisiana. things that happened. Yeah. But the best story is Kirk Kerkorian. Kirk Kerkorian did what our friend from Colorado did. He hired one of, some of the top lawyers and people in Hollywood. One of them, whose partner goes to Pepperdine parties, and I know very well, um, was also on the board of United Artists and Warner Brothers. And so when my when Kirk Kerkorian bought MGM, he said, well, we're in trouble financially. We should sell off all the movies that we have before 1960 uh, to... Turner Broadcasting, which then Warner Brothers, it was just a, it was a, a shell game. And uh, what Kerkorian didn't realize, because he came from the real estate market, that the value of the studio was those titles that they just sold off to Turner Broadcasting. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then he went bankrupt. The, the LA Times has this wonderful story on all these people in detail who would get fleeced because they don't understand. And these are giving billions of dollars, like the one from Denver lost four billion and sold his their chain and everything else. He said when Kirk Kerkorian went bankrupt again with MGM, because he was a tough Armenian, he didn't want to sell the studio. He wanted to come back and make a success. He hired the same people. The, the lawyer was sitting there with a Cheshire cat grin. He had sold the rest of the studio assets 
to Warner Brothers, which then bought Turner and they and collected the vault. And Kerkorian said, I don't know what happened. He still this is the magic of the industry. If you don't know, that's why I teach the class, is to try to get people to understand what's going on with them. But I would say that the, that the worst part is some of the Christian uh, so-called distributors, the new ones, that aren't paying the value of the movie or the entertainment. They're not giving people what they deserve. And until we were, I mean, I've been on the board of NRB since 1978. I'll give you an example. The NRB always caters to the uh, Let's tell people market. what it is. So NRB is the National Religious Broadcasters, which represents sort of and all I keep telling Christian them that you've TV, come to radio, my talk. movies. If you want to move, you've got tremendous platforms. And if you want to move from the donor market to the real world, you've got to start doing, you know, picking up advertising, working on a different model so that you can get numbers in here. And we can go into detail why that works and everything else. But you want numbers like, you know, the movie guy gets 41 million. You want those numbers. We're a platform to help people. We don't distribute films. So that's not what we do. No, but, but you, you're I'm a guy who's been there and you, you have all these relationships and like with us. From, from our very first film, Bella, and onward, you, you've you always been there for us to whether it's look at our script, you get mad at us if we don't take all your advice, or uh, you, but you're there, huh. to, you're there to give Well, a, I want you to win. I, know, I, I want know. you to win, Jason. I, I get great Are you still heart giving, with these people. You're still mad at us about Little Boy. You, but, you know, you gave us, I think, a lot of good no, advice I, on I, Little Boy. I, but, listen, I like Little Boy. It's an, it's an Italian neorealist uh, uh, film, you know, surrealist film. It's got a lot of good assets, and you know what the complaints are. What I want you to do is move between art house films. Bella is one of my favorite films of all time, and you'd be happy to know that in the class, every, a lot of the people who are multimillionaires uh, love Bella. That was one of their favorite Christian films, and you and people kept bringing it up as having, you know, moved the needle. So you can do it, and you're doing it with your little films. They're doing great. You just got to get out of uh, the Christian ghetto. Well, I mean, that's one of the things, and I, I think we have been pretty successful with our films of not being in the Christian ghetto because I people outside of – I don't think anyone thinks of Bella or The Stoning of Soraya M or Little Boy even as Christian films. Um, of course, though, our faith is infused deeply within them. But for me, I have to admit, Dr. Bear, I'm very tepid. I have big ambitions in media and entertainment. Um but I want to be very prudent. I've lost enough of other people's money. Um, and, and it's something that really, you know, want to do. And it's a tough industry and it's very scary. And, um, you know, for example, Little Boy was a very, very big budget film. And so I'm trying to learn with the smaller films and distribution is in such disarray. I don't know if anyone knows how to distribute a film right now. I don't know if anyone understands consumer habits because they've been just changed because of covid these shutdowns and um but what i am eager to do and like you're an example to me is fortitude not leave i honestly didn't like the film business at first it was an, a way to tell stories which i like telling stories but i don't like to have to partner with 800 other people to get a story told and that's what a movie is it's you're partnering with everyone from lawyers in new york to teamsters in la and everything in between. And, uh, you know, a farmer in Iowa that funds your film, and, and you got to bring all these people together. It's a very, it's, it's, as you know, it's the most, I think it's probably the most challenging thing in the world after war. I mean, war is definitely uh, more it challenging. It is war. It's yeah. war. And so how, so the, the platform that you just talked about, which I'm not going to mention again because they live here in Gabriel, and they're friends of ours, um, how much did they pay you for the movie? How many people did they reach? Did they tell you how many numbers? Yeah, so we're getting all the numbers. Are you talking about so uh, Divided Hearts of America? So we 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 um, yeah. so we wanted Divided Hearts of America to be a message of unity and the Imago Dei, the image of God, the, the dignity of the child in the womb in the midst of this season, this political season. And uh, so Salem has been a great partner for us. And my nonprofit funded it, and Benjamin Watson's nonprofit funded it. So we have no donors to pay back. I'm sorry, no investors to pay back. Excellent. excellent. So, so for us, but how many people watched it? Um, you know, we're looking at right now about a hundred thousand. I think a hundred thousand watched it. But um, you know, I don't want to. You know, 
I don't want to give too much. I'll tell you, we spent 150,000 PNA. That's it. The film cost, we spent less yeah. than 400,000 well, to make this know, movie and distribute this film. And between our billboard campaign, which we ran all over the country, we ran billboards. No, 100,000 100, is good. If, if you keep it under, you know, as I say about Tyler Curry, that market that he caters to, and, you know, they, he makes some good movies and some bad movies, yeah. um, reaches maximum of 100 million. So what Tyler Perry does is keep everything below 10 million. But the guy we talked about who is uh, from Texas, uh, you know, he, he put a lot of money into there. And his movie made, you know, one-tenth of that. If the movie makes less than a million dollars, let's say it makes a million dollars at $10 a ticket, that's yeah. 100,000 people in a country of 340 million people. And I said, why are you making these films? And he said, to reach people with the gospel. I said, well, you made 100,000 people in a country of 340 million. I need you to do a little more, more than that. Well, so and let me tell you how I think Dr. Blake would. Well, I want to share with you it's sort of our thought with, with Divided Hearts of America. We, we, um, we made it through a nonprofit. Nobody really got paid. And if you, you know, you gave it a great review, it is, it looks like a, over a million dollar it's documentary. It's a good movie. It looks like a million dollar movie. So we don't like to talk about the budget, but you know, this is family. Even though this audience is getting scary big, <laughs> I never used to get nervous doing my podcast. And now I look at the numbers. And I'm like, we're in the top 1% of podcasts in the world, uh, often in the top 20 in the country and in countries across the world. Um, so, but we're a family. And so we, we, everyone leaned in. We didn't pay anyone uh, except for below the line. And we funded it through a nonprofit. Our real goal, like you said, it's advertising and marketing and publicity. So we were on Fox news countless times, drudge report, Hollywood reporter, all with the message of the dignity of the child in the womb all sort of Good. next to the name Excellent. of Benjamin Watson. So in my mind, my nonprofit for a, a half a million dollar investment, we were able to probably get 10 to $15 million in messaging for the dignity of the child in the womb from billboards to rate. I mean, Salem gave us, you know, all, I don't want to, I don't know what their deals are with other people, but let's just say a lot of radio time, right? With a lot of radio, a lot of ads. Um, and, Benjamin Watson, being who he is, was everywhere. We were even in the Hollywood Reporter. We were on the front of Drudge. Um, and so you you add all that up. Now we're looking at $10, 15000000 million in earned media for the, tr the truth of the beauty of the child in the womb. And that's how I look at films. You know, Now, this year, I'm working on Dr. Bear. We're working on a kung fu movie and two documentaries. The kung fu movie, I'm working with sort of uh, – um, Black Hollywood, you talked about how I'm working with some of the biggest names in Hollywood on this. It's a Kung Fu movie set in modern times and it's, it's aimed at young, young, young men, young adults. It's uh, but it, it doesn't preach the gospel, but it, Who's your... I, I can't say anymore. Someday I'll, we're going to talk about I'll tell you it off the and line. we're going to help you reach. Yeah. I Someday think this we're going to be big. a lot of people. This film, when you, when I'll, I'll talk to you, film off... you make is good. This is every gonna, film you make is good. This is the first film I have made other than with Steve McAvity that's with like big Hollywood insiders. So this is, this is, they came to me and I'm like, whoa, and actually there's two other films that came to me. And normally I'm like always no, you know me, I've been kicking Hollywood away from me for 20 years. Like stay away. I'm just trying to do my thing. But these, this film, because it really celebrates the dignity of, of youth. Oh, that was, let's, let's change gears real quick to my favorite movie of the past two years. And um, I, I, I should have researched what you think about this guy, but I am, I am uh, obsessed with Taiko Atiti. And I think Jojo Rabbit is up there with my top movies of all time. Yeah, very funny movie. Very funny. We almost considered it for the Movie God Awards, except for some themes in it. Although I think that we're going to put movie uh, Mr. Jones in the Movie God Awards, and we have put, you know, tough movies in, including Schindler's List and including The Promise, which I love The Promise. So, um, yeah, it's a very funny movie. Could have been a little funnier, but it was funny. You did a good job. Well, it wasn't just so much that you, what I liked about it was here you have a Jewish writer who's Maori and Jewish, and I guess you know, living most of my life in Hawaii, I've been greatly influenced by the sort of Polynesian culture. It's it is a very Polynesian film because it's a very kind yep. film. 
you know, especially like Maori and Samoan humor, it's they don't have sarcasm. There's no cruelty. Sometimes there doesn't even seem to be a punchline and they'd start laughing and it's very sweet. So here you have a movie that only Taika Waititi could have written. He's half Jewish, half Maori, raised in the country. And as a little boy, he says that he was, as a little Jewish boy in rural New Zealand, he was obsessed with drawing swastikas. It was like a secret shame. He didn't know why. And that's why this book, Caging the Skies, intrigued him. But he's showing in this cancel culture that where we want to hate everybody for something of their youth, this Jewish guy writes a script about a little boy who's in the Hitler youth whose best friend is imaginary Hitler, you know? And it's very sweet in the way it shows the awakening of Eros in a young boy and the way it, it shows a sort of reverence for liberty, liberty and it's sort of understanding of how ideology uh, perverts normal people that they sh maybe shouldn't be hated but pitied. Um, but of all of Taika Waititi's movies, like Boy and Hunt for the Wilder People, they, he just shows like this great memory of what it's like to be a young, insecure adolescent. And um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm an evangelist for, for Taika Waititi's movie. Not that he needs me. I, well, I'm, 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 I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you just because, you know, I should have gotten off a half hour ago. But well, anyway, I, boring I you? love you dearly. So okay. I'm, I'm hanging on. But here, uh, I'm going to give you one little insight, uh, which may help a lot, because we get a lot of people teaching who've done movies with 18,000 people. And every time the class asks, what is your secret to being a producer? I mean, a big producer on this. They get line producers to work on. He said, producer has two qualities. One, you've got to be so persuasive and nice uh, that you can get anybody to work on anything. Two, you've got to be so tough that you can get rid of anybody. And talked about doing a major movie, which you know the name of. You know, a director, four days into it, wasn't doing his job. They fired the director. Now, that's a week of shooting. That's really a tough time. And uh, because you've got to be, one, persuasive and nice, which you are. And two, you've got to be so tough that you can get rid of people. And you are, Jason. You can do both of those things. So I believe that you can handle a crew of 18,000. I believe that you can handle a lot of producers, writers, and directors who are trying to tug it in different directions. I think you've got a vision, and I think you're going to excel, and you're going to move up to movies that are making not just a, you know what they're making now, but a, a billion dollars. I have billion-dollar filmmakers coming to the office, and I want you to be a billion-dollar filmmaker. Well, Dr. Bear, I, I, you can, I can promise you this. I'm going to relentlessly try to tell beautiful stories and reach more and more people. And I hope I live yep. long enough. And you're going to do it. To, to, to live out your aspirations for me. Dr. Bear, um, is there going to be a Movie Guide Awards in 2021 that of people course. can go to? That, 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 you know, are we going to get around Governor yeah. Gruesome? I'm with, February 19th is the Movie Guide Awards. You know, we still do parties at our house, and uh, last weekend we had just a big uh, crowd, so Gavin uh, Gruesome would have been very upset by it, <laughs> but we're paying no attention to those. Okay, uh, as you said earlier, you know, we're doing what God wants. Praise God. So I'm going to do my I'm going to block out if I'm not already booked with speaking or anything. I'm going to block out. I don't want to. I've missed too many movie guides in a row. I really want to be there this year. And then are there any class, are there online class? Now is the time, right? I, I guess you're moving your classes online. So people all over the world it might be easier now than ever to take a movie guide course. We, we grew 71% last year, 76% of that 71% in terms of, I mean, we're up at 41 million people, uh, you know, so you don't think of the dollars, but 76% uh, of those were, were new users. About 90% of those are young men, and uh, Robbie twisted my arm, and I didn't want to do it to get to a testimony, and it was seen by, uh, you know, over a million people in a very short period of time. 90% young men, 60% under 24, which, of course, is the sweet spot for who we want to reach. Uh, we do reach a lot of women. We do reach a lot of young mothers, uh, but I'm interested in seeing people being transformed, so that's why we're out there. Well, Dr. Bray, you've been doing the hard work now for, did you say 70 years? 
I've been in the industry since 1946, since I was born in the industry. <laughs> when I was born, my father was a superstar on Broadway, starring in Showboat. So the, all the trades said Bob Allen has had, you know, a son. Blah blah blah. That same thing happened with my sister when she was born. So, you know, I've been uh, doing commercials and for the Mickey Mouse Club since I was little. And I, and I'm going to sue Disney sometime because one of the commercials was eating hot dogs at a campfire with all the Mickey Mouse Club kids. And I ate so many hot dogs that I just became addicted to food and it's kept me fat for years. So when I have a hard heart attack, I'm going to maybe they'll Disney settle getting me fat. Ask him to settle for a fast pass. Just say, we'll settle out of court. Just give me a fast <clears throat> pass. So you can take your grandchildren to the front of the yeah. line. That might be a good deal right there. Well, Dr. Bear, I cannot thank you enough for your, your friendship and you as a father and as someone in the entertainment industry as someone I look up to. And, you know, your father and, and you and now your children are continuing to carry that light of Jesus Christ in Hollywood, the most influential city in the world. So uh, thank you, Dr. But we're going to put in the links in the show notes. We're going to put um, how to go to the Movie Guide Awards and how to sign up for classes. God bless. All right. Thanks, Dr. Bear. Aloha. All right. That was Dr. Ted Bear. He is uh, a beautiful human being. I, w I hope there is somewhere in the world some young man who looks at me the way that I look at Dr. Ted Bear. Because that man, I met him my first month in Washington, D.C. And on our first meeting, I just poured out to him all the ways I thought I could use film to change culture and use radio and media. And I, I shared with him all of my ideas. And, you know, he was probably thinking, congratulations, young man, you've discovered the Mediterranean. Yeah, I've been sailing around here for decades now. But, uh, but, he's, but he was always there for me, and he has been that way to so many people, countless people, for generations. So Movie Guide is an organization you need to check out. I'm going to put a link to the Movie Guide Awards. You need to go. To, if you can go, if you can afford to go, and if you have the time, the Movie Guide Awards is a beautiful experience absolutely a beautiful experience it's the oscars for christians and you'll see everyone that you know and love and admire in the entertainment industry they're all there it's beautiful also if you're looking to take a class if you're interested in the film industry and in, in writing directing producing uh, you have to check out what movie guide is offering and i myself i'm going to check out some of the courses now that i have a little more time i think i can take those courses you know, now that I've been involved, I've been involved in producing over 10 films, marketing over 50 films. And, um, but I always, because I didn't, I majored in political science and, and uh, philosophy and history, not film. So it's something I'm self-taught and I, I've learned through mentorship. But I always go back to basics, the basics of storytelling, the basics of marketing, and there's no shortcuts. There's no magic tricks. Um, it's, it's like anything else. You have to master the basics before you can get creative. And so uh, I'm, I'm going to check out some of these movie guide um, courses myself. I'm going to put the, the links there. And you have to watch Squanto. If you haven't watched it already, of course you're going to watch the, the Peanuts Thanksgiving special. I think we don't need to be told to do that. And I'm going to check out some of the other films that Dr. Baird mentioned. Mr. Jones, I'm embarrassed to say that I didn't even know about. And in my book, The Race to Save Our Century, 60 pages were cut out by the editor on the Ukrainian famine. Uh, 60 pages. They said, who in the world wants to read 60 pages on famine? And they threw it out. Uh, and there, here's a movie on that. And I, did, and I run Movie to Movement, and I didn't even know. So I hope you have a blessed Thanksgiving. Our founding fathers, the First Continental Congress, called on our nation to thank God and they said, we should thank God for our blessings in times of abundance. But in times of adversity, we should thank God for sustaining us. And do you know that first Thanksgiving with the Puritans, the pilgrims, that first Thanksgiving was a miracle. You had Squanto, who had been captured by the British, redeemed out of slavery by Catholic monks, became a Catholic, went back to where he was from. His tribe had all died from disease, was adopted by a warlike tribe. Then Puritans fleeing Anglican England because it was too Catholic for them are saved by a First Nation person 
who spoke English and was a Christian. Squanto was the bridge between two worlds. He was the first citizen of the new world. I thank God for being a citizen of the new world. I thank God for being a part of a nation where all the religious traditions, all the communities of the world have poured in to make one nation. And one nation, you are not an American if you do not assent to the truth of the incomparable beauty of the human person. That's what it is to be. There are many people who are American citizens who do not recognize that we are created by God. Do not recognize we have an equal dignity. But that is the declaration principle. There are a lot of people who are American citizens who are not truly citizens of the new world, are not truly Americans. And there are a lot of people that are citizens all over the world, not of the United States, but they are American because they assent. If you are an American, in my mind, assenting to the truth of our equal dignity because we were created by God, that is the American spirit. And Squanto was, in many ways, I think, the first citizen of the new world. And I thank God for being an American. I thank God uh, for giving us the grace to sustain us in this very confusing time. Where like the first Thanksgiving with Squanto, you had disease. We have disease. You had hunger. Now the World Health Organization admits that the COVID shutdowns are leading to epic hunger. It's being reported today in The Guardian. Today in The Guardian, hunger is spreading across the United States of America because of COVID shutdowns. So like the first Thanksgiving, we have hunger, we have disease. And what else did we have in that first Thanksgiving? We had immigrants from England and a warlike tribe, nose to nose, tension. And there was Squanto, who bridged the gap. And that's what it's about. So let's thank God for being a part of this beautiful tradition. Let's thank God for sustaining us through our adversity. Let's thank God for all the grace that he has given us. I say this all the time. A lot of folks struggle with the problem of pain. How could there be no, an all-knowing, all-loving, all-powerful God, yet I suffer like this? I struggle with the opposite. God, how can you be all-knowing and all-loving and all-powerful? And I feel so blessed, but I see people suffering all around me. I call it the problem of grace. Why do I not suffer and others suffer? That thought leads so many people into ideologies, into hatred of their creator. But we have to assent to the truth that God created us with equal dignity and free will, and that free will leads to sin, and that original and actual sin don't fall on us equally. So then what's the answer to that problem, that question of grace? Solidarity. That if each and every one of us helped others struggle with their burdens, those who are carrying way more than their fair share of the world's suffering, if all of us, through an act of our will, really strained to help others carry their burden, there would be no one suffering, right? So, of course, that's not going to happen until our Lord returns. But what we can do, like Mother Teresa, is go into the, that great sea of human suffering every morning, dip our bucket into that sea, take our bucket home every night, and tend to our bucket. For Thanksgiving, tend to your bucket. That's your family, your friends, your neighbors. Don't forget your neighbors without homes. Um, make sure that they're being taken care of. Don't forget your relatives who are problematic with their drug addictions and they're borrowing money and not paying it back. Um, they're argumentative, they're angry. We had all those people, they're the vulnerable too. So let's, uh, let's, this Thanksgiving, thank God for his grace to sustain us and let's be thoughtful to those around us who are struggling. And um, I'm gonna do a special show tomorrow, I think just on Squanto. I think I just, I'm inspired now. I wanna do a show just on Squanto. So check that out uh, until next time. Oh, I always forget. This episode has been brought to you by Movie to Movement, creating a culture of life, love, and beauty through the power of film. Our new film is an extended play at SalemNow.com, Divided Hearts of America. It is the movie. It has the answer to what is dividing us. And it has the secret to what will unite us. 
So go to Salem now and watch Divide the Hearts of America starring NFL Super Bowl champion Benjamin Watson and yours truly, Jason Jones, not only the producer, I'm in it. Go to SalemNow.com and also check out MovieToMovement.com and become a monthly donor. It's monthly donors that really help us sustain us. We are a nonprofit film, a nonprofit organization that uses film. And you know, we are involved in film at every level from development, production, and financing, distribution. The only thing we have never done is exhibition. And all the big chains of filmmaking, we've never owned a theater. But we have been involved in every level of filmmaking. And it's our donors that allow us to do that. So become a monthly donor of Movie to Movement at movietomovement.com. Check out our movie, Divided Hearts of America. And enjoy your super spreader event tomorrow. Happy Thanksgiving. This has been the Jason Jones Show. Powered by Mudhouse Media. Oh, 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 oh